Lately I've noticed that the current of knowledge has slowed down. Social networks and various masters seem to be struggling to attract new audiences. People are becoming more reluctant to acquire new knowledge. I have the feeling that on the one hand time has slowed down, but on the other hand it passes almost instantly. What's going on? And how do you see the coming year? You once mentioned that states could lose their borders, and that seems to be happening. What tendencies should we expect? There are many questions here, so let's address them one by one. First, regarding information, yes, it is true that the perception of information has changed, and, as a result, the perception of time has changed as well. Why has our perception of information changed? Primarily because there is now an overwhelming abundance of it. The density of the informational current has increased to such an extent that, at times, our consciousness is not only unable to process it but also struggles to physically perceive it. An ordinary person's consciousness limits this information, reduces its frequency, and automatically rejects it. The psyche itself shuts down a consciousness that is used to a certain density of informational current. Most people who do not specifically develop their consciousness have a psyche that lacks flexibility and simply cannot handle an informational current denser than what their consciousness can perceive. I emphasize that it's not that their consciousness is unable to process, digest, realize, unpack, or use this information as a resource, but rather that it is simply unable to perceive it, to take it in, much like air. We breathe air and the volume of our lungs limits how much we can take in. If we train to improve our lung capacity, we can take in more air, but there is still a limit, a physical limit. It is the same with human consciousness. Those who develop their consciousness acquire additional qualities. They either compress this information very tightly, thereby increasing the density of the informational current, or they instantly decompose this information and divide it into its component parts at the very moment they receive it, just as it enters their mental body. They sort it into categories, necessary and unnecessary, important and unimportant, useful and useless, and put it on shelves so to speak. But for the most part people perceive information in the way they're used to. Of course, when the external current of information becomes too dense and overwhelming, the psyche shuts down to protect itself. It says, this is too much for me, this is poison. I can't process so much information at once. I can't make new neural connections to help me process it faster. I just can't. Accordingly, any additional information, even if it is very useful or incredibly interesting, offered to people during this period will encounter their unconscious resistance. They simply will not be able to accept it, no matter how much they want to. It's like a full stomach that cannot digest anything else, even a favorite food. Something similar happens with consciousness. As for the perception of time, this is directly related to what has been said above. The point is that time is a substance that is made up of energy and information, the elements of water and air respectively. The air element represents informational currents, and the water element represents energetic currents. The density of the air determines how dense time is, and it is obvious that the faster the air moves, the faster time seems to flow. People who perceive this information as dense, as unbelievably dense, notice that time has accelerated dramatically, as if it were flying by without a pause. There is also the opposite effect. When people close themselves off from this dense current of information, when they perceive this dense air in this intense current, their psyche shuts down and stops perceiving it. As a result, they experience the opposite effect. It seems to them that time has stopped, that it is standing still, and that it is not moving at all.
These two effects show that the energy informational currents outside are moving at one speed, while within us they are moving at a different speed. This discrepancy causes consciousness to signal to the mind that such an external current is a form of aggressive influence. The external and internal environments are in dissonance, which has so far manifested as an inability to perceive the natural passage of time. The fact that it is manifesting in this way for now is a good sign because these effects will deepen over time. In other words, they will progress from the higher bodies to the lower bodies. At the level of the causal body we perceive time and recognize that we are out of sync with it, but at the level of the mental body we are still able to think clearly. However, when this problem of desynchronization reaches the mental body, we lose the ability to think straight, we begin to forget words, we begin to forget appointments, we even begin to forget things that we do automatically, that are literally imprinted on the etheric body. Then panic attacks start to occur, which indicates that the problem has already reached the level of the astral body. This manifests either as irrational fears or on the contrary, as complete apathy and a careless attitude toward everything. Then all of this reaches the level of the etheric body, and we begin to experience health problems, not physiological at first, but psychosomatic. Physiological diseases will appear as the final effect. This is what happens when the problem comes down from the higher bodies to the lower bodies, so if you are already feeling this disynchronization at the level of the causal body, you should start working on it now, always remembering that this problem will gradually but inevitably move down. If you ignore it now, it won't disappear. Instead it will begin to manifest on lower and lower levels until it finally affects the physical body. Therefore, you have to work with your sense of time. How to do this? Through meditation, deep immersion in yourself, and the I am state. And meditations are very helpful here to find the feeling that you are on a wave, but the wave is not standing still. You feel the speed at which it is coming, the direction in which it is going, and you do not resist it, you become that wave. This is where the skills of working with the elements that we study in the elements department colleagues, can be of invaluable service to you, especially now, during this time of cataclysms. Naturally, cataclysms will occur, as you mentioned in your follow-up questions about the coming year, the states, and the tendencies to expect, of course, the changes that are taking place now won't be completed in a year. And what we were talking about earlier, the one religion for all and the absence of government, along with all the frightening stories we hear on the television screens and other media about a world government, a single religion, and a unified financial system, all of that is going to happen. The scary part is when you wake up one morning and they say, Guys, we've done everything right. Everybody rejoice, put on your muzzles, and rejoice. That's really scary, this had already happened in 1991 or 1993, during a period of serious reform. The night before, a newscaster cheerfully assured us that there would never be a monetary reform. Yet the next morning, everyone woke up and realized that their money had become worthless, completely worthless. That memory remains vivid, especially for those who have experienced bankruptcy in their lives. What followed was a series of defaults and a system of currency depreciation that eventually affected everyone in one way or another. And we know very well what it feels like, how difficult it is to start all over again, how frightening it is to lose everything, and how uncertain the prospects for tomorrow can be. Naturally, when we talk about such global changes, we unconsciously draw on our own experiences and think, no, I never want to go through that again. And many people around us also draw on their own or others' experiences, 
telling terrifying stories about how terrible and frightening it all was. Of course, what is happening now is an open Overton window, which is simply introducing you to the idea that these changes are inevitable, so get over your fear now and it will be easier for you later, of course. It will not happen tomorrow, it is a slow process. The absence of borders, a single religion, and a unified financial system will not emerge immediately. It will take years, perhaps decades, and for some processes even a century may not be enough. But there's no real reason to fear all these changes. After all, our experience shows that the sooner we start, the sooner we can reap the benefits. It's like a financial pyramid, those who start first get the most, those who start second get less, and those who start last get nothing. We should prepare for this process now, recognizing that these changes will happen, that they are inevitable and necessary. At the same time, the new reality we are talking about will not be the same for everyone, it will be diverse. Each individual will shape their own systemic factors, such as religion, governance and the absence of borders, because a single framework cannot satisfy everyone. In the absence of government, they will define their own religion, set their own boundaries, determine where their state is and decide what their finances are within that state. They will essentially create everything for themselves. What we said about the individual reality is what this new reality will look like, at least initially. And if a person feels the need to set boundaries, he will certainly do so and learn to protect them. He will let his own people in, keep strangers out, and be a law unto himself, his own master and boss. Of course, this won't happen this year or next, and borders won't be removed in the near future, on the contrary, they will be strengthened as much as possible. There will be restrictions, and they will be significant. Some will be experimental, some will be enforced, and some will come from mutual agreement. It will be different for everyone and it will become a necessity. Because in order to understand what freedom is, one must first know what its absence feels like. Those who have long lived in freedom may forget how to appreciate it, while those who have long lived without it, having gained their freedom, may not learn to appreciate the freedom of others. There are many factors that show that humanity is not homogeneous. With significant differences in worldview, mentality, and even way of life, and we have discussed this many times. For instance, if we compare some Muslim communities with certain European communities that we might call post-Christian, we can see a difference of several hundred years, about 300 to 400 years. This significant time span represents a huge gap in mentality, worldview, understanding of the world and the concept of freedom, both for oneself and for others. It is essential to find a way to reduce this gap, otherwise we will never escape wars, conflicts, murders and crimes. For example, the situation in enlightened Europe, 
which, whether out of ignorance or intention, I cannot say, has allowed a huge number of migrants, not settlers, but migrants with completely different cultures and worldviews, highlights this problem. This situation has said to them, you're just a bunch of small-minded idiots. Do you realize what the difference between cultures is? These so-called guests are behaving much like your own ancestors did 400 years ago. There simply aren't enough police resources to handle them effectively. You need to make injections into the culture. You need to make injections into the worldview, but you don't have any injections that would work quickly. You have not developed them. You have arrogantly and naively assumed that your peacefulness is enough, without considering that this peacefulness comes at the expense of others. That is where all the problems come from. For this reason, because of this huge mistake, the borders will certainly be closed. And these algorithms will be developed because the current situation cannot continue, it could destroy everything. Neither you nor the people you allow into your society will become more civilized. In the end, everyone will be harmed.